There we are. We are live. All right. Hey guys, Jake is here. And today I have a special guest with me. I am uh, incredibly excited about this interview because this is someone that I've been, uh, I've been following for quite a bit. We are friends on Facebook, but yet we, we this is our very first time interacting. And so, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring her on here is because, uh, you know, there are so many things that are inspiring about uh, my friend Mariah Hopper. Uh, but some of the things that you guys need to know about her is that she is incredibly fit. Uh, she is a mom of two. She's a wife. And uh, you work full time, right? I do. And I'm in college full time. And you're in college full time. Awesome. Even better. Okay. So uh, super busy. And what, what are you doing in college? Uh, so I go online. Okay. Okay. But what are you, what are you doing? What are you studying? Um, I'm getting my degree in cybersecurity and information assurance. And that's what you currently work in, yeah, right? Exactly. Yep. Gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. Now, besides all of that, I see you working out at least, at least three to five times a week. Is that, is that about right? Oh yeah. Minimum. So it's, minimum. it's always more than three. So it's usually, if I'm honest, it's like six days a week. I have to make myself take that rest day. So Gotcha. Okay. So how old are your daughters? Uh, my youngest, uh, Zoe is nine and Grace is going to be 13 on Sunday, actually. So, okay. Okay. So they're pretty independent. They are. Yes. But you still have to take them. I'm, I'm assuming they, they do sports, right? They do. Yep. We've got soccer tournaments almost every weekend and then practices during the week. And We've got two cats, so you know all everything that comes with pets and a household, and we volunteer with church and a dog rescue. So I mean, we're constantly going. Just go, go, go. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so one of the reasons, I mean, many reasons. I've, I've been wanting to do this forever in a million years, but uh, because I see all your posts and I see how active you are, and I see that you're constantly working out. And then I, 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 I clicked on your page one day and I was like, wait, she's a mom. And I'm, I mean, it's, you're busy. You're super, super busy. Yep. <laughs> how do you, how do you, how do you fit six workouts a weekend when you are a mom of two, your wife, you're full, you're full time, uh, you're working full time, you're going to college. How does, how does that happen? A lot of planning, a lot of planning, a lot of organizing and it's all about priority, right? So if something is important to you, I am a firm believer that you're gonna make it work. Um, you know, a lot of people that say they don't have time get an hour of Netflix a day in, right? Or you're on social media scrolling for what appears to be, you know, oh, 10 minutes, you look up, oh my gosh, I've been on here for 45 minutes and my, I'm not in the gym for hours a day. I'm in and out 45 minutes max, that's warm up, cool down. Um, and I just, I have every day planned. I know exactly what I'm doing, how much time I have and when I need to get in and out. So. Gotcha. So has fitness, has fitness always been something important to you or is this something recent? How long have you been working out? I would say, so I started really changing my lifestyle in, in 2014. So even at that point, Zoe was only three. So I was doing workouts when she was napping. I was a stay at home mom at the time. Um, so I was taking Grace to, you know, to, I think first grade at that point, Zoe's napping, I get a quick workout in and then um, you, you just make it work. Wow. Why did that become such a motivation? Why did that become important to you? So I actually, I joined the Navy in uh, 2015. I was already married, already had my kids. People thought I was crazy. Um, so I wanted to get in shape that prior year for the military because I knew how hard it was going to be. Um, and then at that point, I just, I started seeing results. I started seeing um, muscles in places that I didn't know women had muscles. And I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. <laughs> and I, I just, it became just so fulfilling. And I felt so empowered that I didn't want to stop. Wow, wow. Okay, so you would say you started right about in 2014. So it's so it's been it's been six years, well, seven years since you started. Yep. Okay. And prior to that, would you say you were sort of a 
gym goer or not at all? No. no. So you, so you basically, you, you did like we say to some of our people that we say you, we, we can take you from being a couch potato to being a super potato in no time. So literally you went from not doing any of this to just like jumping and being full throttle. And it's been seven years, right? Seven years. Yeah. Now you, I, I, this is a, this is a rhetorical question, but how is your nutrition? Because you are ripped. Like so, and, and that's <laughs> the funny thing. So when I first started this, everybody starts somewhere, right? So people who see me now are like, oh, I could never do that. I could never eat the way that you do. I could never work out as hard as you do. Okay. Well, don't because that's setting yourself up for failure. You have to start small, change one small thing at a time and make that attainable. Our habits, we've, we've had these habits of our life for years. So you're not just going to change them in two weeks. And I think that's why so many people fail because you want these, you have these expectations of something great so fast and it's not going to happen overnight. So I started with the workouts and my nutrition was still trash. I'm going to be honest. I was not raised healthy. Um, I knew nothing about nutrition. So I had to learn everything myself. I started Googling. I was buying books. Um, I also, I, cause I have some medical conditions as well that I, I tailor my nutrition around. So I had to figure all that out as well. Um, now very clean. My nutrition is very clean. Um, I don't believe in cheap meals or cheap days. Um, on my daughter's birthday, I'll have a cupcake with her. I will 100% have a cupcake. It's my daughter's birthday and I will not feel guilty for that. Um, but I'm still at the point we don't have sweets in the house. I will not have them in the house because I will eat them. <laughs> I know myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it doesn't get any easier. I don't want people to think, oh, well, you've been doing it for so long. You don't have those cravings or you. Yes, I do. <laughs> right. Right. Wow. So. So your family eats like this as well? Uh, most of the time I can get them to eat healthy, at least dinner. And then breakfast, I've got certain things. Um, I'll make eggs and stuff for the girls. And they're, they're usually pretty good sports about it. But definitely if my husband gets his say in there, they'll have, you know, some pizza and, and make some macaroni and cheese. And, and that's fine. Um, but I'm really just trying to instill healthiness. It's all about health. Aesthetics are great. Um, you know, six pack abs is cool on the beach. I want health. So I want long-term maintenance. Very, very, very cool. So you, so you don't have, so basically seven days a week, you're eating, you're eating the same food, right? You're, yep. you're, you're eating clean. Yep. What do you, so what do you subscribe to uh, diet wise are you more of a keto or are you more of a macro counter like where where do you where do you fall so I don't have a label on anything um I I've tried several things just because I like to be able to tell people oh well for me this didn't work and for me this did work everybody's so individual so um you know your body is going to react differently to workouts and to nutrition but for me what I have found that works best for me I have kidney disease so if I eat, um, I can't have a ton of carbs. It makes me feel sluggish. It gives me a very bad headache. Um, so all of my carbs come from vegetables. I do love sweet potatoes, so I will eat that, but I don't eat bread, quinoa, rice, oatmeal. I'm not a big straight starchy carb person. Um, so I, I guess it would lean more towards the keto, um, I do eat a pretty high protein diet. And right now that's, that's working with my kidneys. So I go to my nephrologist and, um, we, you know, I have my blood work done and everything. So until changes need to be made there, I'm going to stick, stick with that. But I have good old fashioned pen and paper. I track my calories and my protein and that's it. I weigh my food every day. I have the same thing every day and I could probably eyeball it. But at this point, it keeps me accountable. So, so I just write it all down. Would you say that this new lifestyle has permeated other areas of your life? In other words, 2014 comes around, you know, Mariah changes all these things in her diet and, you know, you're moving different, you're working out and you start to see these changes. 
have you seen have you seen other areas of your life improve because of your nutrition because of your physical activity? Oh, absolutely absolutely i think um not only just moving the body. So we know about the release of all the, the endorphins, right? And the happy, the happy hormones that come out. People, you hear about that all the time, but it is a, when you are consistent with your diet and with your fitness, um, you're going to see that consistency and that dedication carry over to every other part. I mean, it has, it's opened my eyes more to things in my marriage as a mom, um, bettering myself, I'm better for them. So they can't get the best of me if I'm tired because I'm eating all this processed junk food um, and a body at rest stays at rest. So when I'm moving and I'm happy and I feel great, then they feel great. So. Preach, preach, preach. I love it's it. So uh, true. It's so true. That is amazing because we have a saying around here <clears throat> that how you do everything is how you do anything, right? How you do anything is how you do everything. I agree. And, uh, you know, I oftentimes tell people that come on my program that, that not to view this as a way to just lose weight, but we actually see fitness and nutrition as a platform for personal development. And, yeah. and so, you know, we, we see people that, you know, for, I tell my story all the time. I, growing up, I had learning disabilities. I had dyslexia. I had all these traumas, uh, from, from the way, you know, I was brought up uh, and, uh, and all that was really overcome by proper nutrition and movement. And so even some of these things, even some of these traumatic events in our lives, you know, I've, I've, I've interviewed many people that say, hey, my recovery started when I started to eat right, when I started to move the way I was meant to move, uh, even releasing trauma uh, through movement, right? Is, I mean, so just incredibly, incredibly powerful. So that's pretty amazing. Now, you are, you're a Christian as well as I am. I am. Yep. And uh, we, we had this conversation prior to, to, to going live and I, and I thought it was so interesting because I oftentimes try to uh, speak to, to pastors or to, you know, quote unquote, professional spiritual people about the connection between the mind, body and spirit. And a lot of times they look at me like I have four heads and they're like, well, JT, if you're a Christian, you come, you come to faith first by grace Second, God puts faith in your heart to believe in that sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I get that. I get the whole sequence. But right. one of the things that we shared was that, you know, a lot of people don't even know where to start with that, right? Um, but, but we say that when you start moving, you start bringing those proper nutrients and, and your mind is clear, you know, it, it, there is a spiritual connection to movement. Mm -hmm. Can, can you speak, can you articulate that a little better than, than, than I have? Oh, so much. So, and it's funny because the Christian journey is not easy either. You, I mean, at least it's, it's not been for me. I have come and walk away and come and walk away in my teens and, and stuff like that. And, um, and it's just, so the Christian life, right? You're up on the mountaintop and it's great and it's easy to worship God. And then you are in the valleys. And sometimes if I'm honest, I'm like, where are you? You say you're here. You say you're with me. You could make this all go away. Why are you putting me through this? And honestly, the parallel to fitness is so incredible because you get those beginner's gains when you first start working out and you're on this high and you feel great. And then you hit that plateau. Maybe it's six weeks in. You're not seeing inches lost. The weight's going up on the scale. You're confused. You're bloated. Maybe you had a bad meal and you just beat yourself up. Well, that's the same thing Satan does with us as Christians. He gets in our mind and he uses it against us. So you have to be dedicated, right? You have to read the word every day. The renewal of the mind is a daily thing, just like fitness. It's a daily thing. It is you can't do it for a week and then walk away for a month and expect it to work. This is the same thing with Christianity. You're not going to change your heart and your soul and your mind and your spirit if you're not with God every day and giving him that time that he deserves. So I, for me, the parallel is just, it's incredible how that works. I don't think that's coincidence. So. Wow. You're like the uh, female version of me. <laughs> Some of my friends. <laughs> 
JT has said that to me before, but that's amazing. I, I, I love how you put that, how you made that connection and that parallel of, of you know, having to, to renew your mind every day as well as, you know, you have to, you have to work out every day, right? It's this consistent thing that you have to incline yourself towards. So very, very cool. So I, I want to give this conversation a little bit of context. Um, and so I'm going to share my screen really quick here. If you don't mind, I'm just going to yeah. scroll through your Facebook because I think people need to understand <laughs> oh boy. what we're talking about here. Um, so am I? <laughs> Wait a second. Let's see here. Uh, it's loading because we're sharing the screen here. Sometimes it gets a little slow. So let's see the most recent picture Mariah posted. And, and, and guys, you know, I think if you're watching this, I think that her story is so inspiring because she, she, she's only been in the gym for seven years. Right. And yet she has managed, I mean, she looks like an Olympic athlete. Right. And, and, you know, this is something that uh, it's not, gen I mean, sure that there are some genetic dispositions to, 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 to people that do well in the gym and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, this is day in, day out. This is hard work. This is, uh, you know, one of the things Mariah really convicted me personally of is she said, I don't have cheat days. I do. I, I, am, <laughs> I, I just did a video yesterday where I said, hey, I love my ice cream on Sundays. Uh, but this is, this is very, very impressive, especially coming from someone who, you know, you, you've just, uh, you, didn't, you, you haven't been doing this. I've been doing this for 18, 19 years now. Right. And so, um, you know, just, just awesome, just awesome what you've been able to accomplish. And I think it's very inspiring to, to people on the other side, uh, looking at this and saying, well, you know, I, I just, I don't even know where to start. I'm too far off. I'm too overweight. Um, you know, I, I grew up in, in, a, in a cultural background where, you know, uh, it, food and entertainment are intertwined and, and yeah. you know, how, well, one of the questions that I get often is JT, um, you know, how do I get my family on board? Right. Like I, I want to do this, but you know, I am Indian or I am Hispanic or I am, you know, Afro-American and, you know, we like, uh, you know, our fried food and we like, uh, you know, right. we like carbs. And every time we gather, you know, it's like this feast, like what, like, what would you say to someone like that? I would say that I totally understand. Um, <laughs> my husband's from Mississippi. So okay all the fried foods, right? He grew up, I mean, it, even if every time we go visit, his mom cooks for the whole town. I'm like, Alice, who are you feeding? Um, and, and it is hard. I, I'm not, there's no way to sugarcoat it or tell you that this is going to be easy because it's not. Um, it would be great if my husband was on board with me as well, um, but he's not, and he's a grown man and, you know, he has his own choices to make. Um, but for me, I know how important it is to me. Obesity runs in my mom's side of the family. And so I could have very easily said, oh, well, this is just all the women in my family, you know, they're just, they're obese. And this is just my fate too. That's, that's just the reality of the situation. And it's not, it's not absolutely. So I started looking at their lifestyle. They smoke and they drink and they, they eat all these fried foods. And I think, um, we also have to have a little bit of grace, right? So with them, that's how they grew up and maybe they don't know any better. So you have to take into account, educate yourself. I have spent so many hours reading and um, researching for myself because nobody's going to come to you with that information. And at that time I couldn't afford a nutritionist or, you know, a coach to help me along. So I had to do all this on my own. And um, there's still times people are going to, poke fun or, you know, oh, it's just one meal. Come on. Or, you, you know, you can drink a little bit and I, I could have a couple drinks and put some fried pickles down if I wanted to, but I, it makes me feel physically bad the next day. And it's just not worth it to me. So I ask myself, um, is this helping me be closer to who I want to be tomorrow or next week or next month? Um, and cause my journey is not over. Some people, you know, look at me and, oh, well, she's just at the maintenance point and nope, you, you always want more. You always want goals because that's what keeps us going. So, um, it's not easy at all. And you just have to find that balance for you. Everybody's different and people aren't going to be like me and, and eat clean 95% of the time. And that's okay. Um, 
but you just, you really have to look at your goals and, and say, is this getting me closer or further away from where I want to be? So. So to give some of our viewers just a little bit more context, because, you know, our minds are always uh, very inclined to look for the reason, well, she's younger, well, she's, you know, this, well, she's that. How, okay. how young are you, Ryan? So actually, March 6th, I will be 34. Okay, okay. That's awesome. So That's not, awesome. I'm old, obviously, but, um, and, you know, with my girls, I feel like it's very important for the other moms and women to know that I didn't have natural birth. I had two C-sections. So there's also a lot of excuses I've heard around that. Well, you know, I had this and my, my muscles are just, they're torn or they're ripped to shreds and, and everybody's going to have something, right? You got to overcome it. So 100. 100%. So last question for you, Mariah here, if uh, God forbid you woke up tomorrow <clears throat> and you looked in the mirror and you were 60 pounds overweight overnight, it just happened overnight. You lost all of your muscle and you had to start from scratch again. What would be your game plan? What would you do that morning? So <sighs> First thing that comes to mind is my pen and paper because I'm a planner, as I said before. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to start doing research. I'm going to see, um, try my best on my own to figure out about how many calories I need to intake. How active am I? How much am I burning? Um, what do I want my macros to look like? And then I'm going to play with my diet. I'm going to do maybe try a higher carb and lower protein. See how that works. If I'm not getting results, not in a day, not in three days, in three to four weeks, then I'm okay. That's not working for me. Let's go a little bit higher protein and then fat and have carb be the lowest. I'm going to play with eating times and water intake. I mean, there's just so many different elements. You've got to be patient. You've got to give your body time to adjust and to really see those results. So, um, and I did also want to point out, you had talked about your childhood. And so I didn't have anything traumatic mentally as a child. I don't, I don't think anyway, but in the Navy, um, I did have a deployment to Africa. So got back and I have anxiety and I have PTSD and fitness has not only helped with every other aspect of my life, but it has helped me with that tremendously. So, um, I know sometimes it's hard if you are in a depressed state to get out there. You don't feel like doing anything, but once you do and you start moving, it is amazing. Just within five minutes, how amazing you feel that anxiety just goes away. So. That's incredible. That is, that is a testimony and a half. That's amazing. That's amazing. So for those of you hearing on the other side, you're listening and you know, you're, you're on the fence about changing your lifestyle and you're like, well, you know, I'm just too far away or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm too overweight or I'm, you know, I'm culturally inclined towards this or that, or I have too many kids and my life is busy, whatever it is that has stopped you from, from changing your lifestyle. Um, this is a perfect example of someone who, you know, she's not sitting around uh, doing nothing. She's a, she's a busy, busy life. Uh, she has managed to, to make things happen. She's a planner. Uh, this is something that if, uh, if you followed on my Facebook lives before, I talk a lot about planning and being proactive and that excellence doesn't just happen by accident, uh, but it is a, a byproduct of, uh, of planning. And so being very strategic about, uh, you know, your goals and the things that you're trying to achieve is pivotal to your success. And, um, you know, and, and, and the last thing I want to say to those, uh, you know, watching on the other side is, um, regardless of, of where you are, right? Uh, you, you can start somewhere, right? And that's one of the things that Mariah mentioned. She said, you know, uh, to put it in a, in a, in different, in a, in a different way, you said, you know, most people want that right away instead of incrementally walking in that direction. Uh, oftentimes, you know, when people come to me and they say, well, how am I gonna get 150 pounds off? And, my, uh, my answer is always, if, if you had to eat an elephant, how would you do it, right? Uh, One bite at a time. And of course, of course, right? So uh, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And so 
hopefully this interview inspired you guys. I know I'm inspired. I might actually cut back to only one cheap meal weekend uh, after this conversation. So <laughs> but, uh, I, I really, really appreciate your time. Uh, I, I commend you for your dedication, uh, for, you know, what you stand for. We, we need more people like you. And, um, you know, you're just incredibly inspiring. And so guys, if you're watching this, if you want to be inspired by awesome workouts, she's pretty consistent on, on posting, uh, follow her. Her name is Mariah Hopper. Uh, you're going to be super, super inspired as I am every time I go through her feed. So, uh, that is pretty much it for us. Mariah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely, yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely be in touch and guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments down below. If you're watching this live, hashtag live. If you're watching it on replay, hashtag replay, or just give us a little emoji and let us know that you watched it, that you were inspired. And, um, you know, uh, send, send, send Mariah some kind words. All right. <laughs> Mariah, have an amazing weekend. I will talk to you, you. soon. Okay. okay, bye.